introduction to comedy writing, finding your comedic voice. I'm the SMC front desk coordinator and producer of Here at Home. So that's kind of my own show that I, that I do at SMC. And I focus on a lot of immigrant multicultural issues and whatnot. Um, I'm also a comedy writer. There I am. There's a picture of me performing at the comedy studio with the late and great Wally, who is, who was my mentor. Um, and he is here in spirit with us today. And this live show is dedicated um, in memory of him because he really was a big inspiration for me. And he helped me create my character, Kay Best, who you'll get to know a little bit later. My writing career began back in college at the Boston Globe, where I did a, an inter a journalistic in internship. I was also an arts and entertainment columnist for several years at the Bay State Banner, which is an African-American multicultural newspaper in Boston. I published hundreds of articles, including interviews with film director Spike Lee and actor comedian Cedric the Entertainer. And now I'm sharing my love of laughter um, to heal beyond the SMC community. I grew up on In Living Color, and I can't tell you Joya brought, brought to me back in the 90s. I mean, they were just ahead of their time. They continue to be, um, you know, Three's Company, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. I love Three's Company. Oldie but goodie. My favorite show. I, 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 I love Jack Tripper. <laughs> he's the best. And, and of course, Dave Chappelle, he's another comedic genius. I mean, he, he pushes the envelope, but he's such a genius that he does it in a way that you feel like you should be offended, but you're not because it, he, it was so funny and clever. Why don't we start with Aline? Sure. I'm excited to be here, Tina, because you are definitely an amazing Aww. entrepreneur in so many trades. And, you know, just getting to know each other more, you know, through the year, I feel like we've, you know, really connected and I learned so much about you and you're just amazing in all that you do. And I'm so excited mm -hmm. to learn more about, you know, comedy script writing and, you know, the, the little um, shout out that you gave to Wally is really sweet in our video as well. And, you know, he's definitely been a great mentor to you, I know. So thanks for sharing that. Um, and I love, love, love and living color in three's company. So I think, you know, just attending your class tonight is exciting because just sharing, you know, some of our favorite comedy, talking comedy, you know, and learning more about writing comedy uh, to me is so inspiring because being a creator and entrepreneur in the entertainment industry, uh, you know, starting off as an actress and doing some modeling, promotional work and a lot of, you know, auditioning and having an agent uh, really has inspired me to work on the other end of the industry. So I've been doing a lot of producing, uh, stage managing, creating, and, you know, working uh, and being a member at Somerville Media for many years, working on different productions for, for Yvette, with you, with, you know, even with Robert, with all of us through the years has been amazing and such a learning experience that inspired me to host and create my own show. And you've helped me with that so much uh, as well. So I feel like, you know, supporting one another is important to me and learning so much on all ends of the industry has just been life changing and having the opportunity to produce from home. And so really women in comedy, I feel like is such a successful, yeah. you know, has been so successful and I love comedy. Uh, I've done some comedy. I mean, the only comedy I've done is in the movie Sweeney Killing Sweeney. I got to play a comedic quirky waitress with a Boston accent. So definitely check out Sweeney Killing Sweeney if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so I want to, you know, learn more about comedy and comedy script writing. So nothing better than learning from you, but learning from the best. So that's what's inspired me today to participate and uh, join. So I'm really excited to be here. Okay, Rob, I am a member of the TV station coming on two years. I helped out with Dead Air Live. I helped Yvette with the Song of the Line, and I'm currently producing the Soar Sisters uh, with Noreen. And we are working on our first episode. It should, should be coming up pretty soon, within the next week. Amazing. Uh, I really like The Office. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like the office a lot and I like uh, parks and recreation. Yeah. And um, really impressed with Steve Carell yeah. in the office because he's able to play this total jerk who's just obnoxious and oblivious and clueless about how offensive he is and how incompetent he is. <laughs> yeah, in real life, he's such a nice guy. I've watched interviews with him. He's like, he's such a gentle, down to earth guy. It's, it's, it's really neat. I like, I like seeing the acting that, that came out in that show. And just, I think personally, I like everybody in the, in the show. They're all really talented actors. I'm really just hoping to find my creativity. I've been wanting to write um, like just a script for a short film for a while. And I get ideas, but I, I, I don't write them down. And I need to, and I'm just like to put this into being and see what can come of it. Uh, I big hobby of mine is photography. Been doing it for a long time, probably little, about 13 years. Uh, so everyone's gonna pull from real life experience. No need to make anything up, although we will use the element of embellishment, but we're gonna pull it from a real life scenario. And then we're going to break it down and I'll show you in a moment how, how some sort of um, elements to consider to break it down, to pull out the comedic, comedic potential using your imagination and, and your inspiration from Steve Carell, from Jack Tripper, from Friends, from who, whomever that you find um, inspiration from. Laughter is healing. And so we want to be able to channel that energy here as well. Um, and then in doing so, we're going to develop our character, an existing character, or find a new character that, that will tell the story in a comedic perspective. Uh, once we write this, this skit based on that story, and then all we need is a notebook and pen, and you guys are ahead of me on that one. For the remainder of time, we're going to do a quick breathing slash meditation exercise. We're going to go into the history, very brief history of comedy. I'm going to give you two examples from what I used from, from a couple of my performances. One's the coyote and tomato garden story. What does a coyote have to do with the tomato garden? You'll find out. My big wig boyfriend. And then once you see those examples, then you'll, you'll come up with your own um, comedic content. We'll tell the story straight as it is, and then we'll use these elements I'll give you to pull that potential out, create our characters. And by creating them, we're gonna do, I guess, some warm ups, funny faces, funny sounds, body language. And then put it all together, and then I'll give you another example which will be K Best. That, that will be my character. I was gonna uh, say we can't you can't go without K Best. Right. You'll you'll see you'll see her as as for the examples. I don't have my wig right now. I really couldn't find my wig to be honest. I don't know where it is right now. Oh. <laughs> but you'll see a photo of her with the wig. <laughs> oh that's funny. And uh, you know we're just gonna have fun with it. And we're gonna go into a little break. We kind of have to do this quickly because now we have probably about an hour. We'll go into a little break um, and then we'll start pulling everything together and then we'll do the wrap up. This is, it's quite normal to get anxious and nervous every time you perform. You wouldn't be human if you didn't. And it's actually a good thing. It's just a matter of channeling that energy. Um, and Wally, you know, we, we, you know, cause he was a big energy guy and I learned a lot about that through him. I do like yoga and meditation. So let's start. I thought it would be a really good idea to start in centering ourselves and just kind of clear the junk that's in our heads. So we find a seat, sit upright on your chair or your sofa, whatever that you're sitting on. Anchor your feet firmly onto the floor. So you have a sense of grounding. And then try to clear your mind as you begin to draw your attention to the sounds and sensations of your breath. Start by taking a few deep breaths. And as you breathe in through your nostrils and out through your mouth, 
Feel your body expand, your lungs taking in fresh air. And as you exhale, let the sense of letting go whatever it is that's on your mind and in your body. Again, breathe in through your nose. And as you breathe out, if you haven't closed your eyes already, go ahead and gently close them. Feeling a way for the body to continue to press down on that contact and onto the surface beneath you. Just allow the mind to go and do its own thing. Don't think about what's going on right now. Don't stop it. Don't stop those thoughts. Just don't put any attention towards them. Focus your attention on your breathing. And as you direct your attention to your breathing, Notice if your body feels heavy or light now, if it's restless or still. Is there a, a flow or does anything feel stuck? Start scanning from the top of your head, working your way down. And you can do this a few times. Again, you're not thinking about anything that's going on in your body. And as you scan, just become more aware of your breath. Feeling that rising and falling sensation. Just take notice of any thoughts as they may appear not attaching yourself to any of it. You are simply observing what's going on in your body. Now take a few more deep breaths and count them if you want. Remember, following your breath and allowing thoughts to come and go, giving the mind lots of space, focus on physical sensation created by the breath, an increasing sense of ease in the body, space in the mind. Knowing that the process of letting go brings attention back to your body. Start feeling the contact. Notice the space around you now and the sounds. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes and come back. I took a nice nap. That was great. Yeah. All right. So grounded. Let's do this. What is comedy? It's a genre of fiction that refers to any disclosure or work generally intended to be humorous or amusing by inducing laughter, especially in TV, film, stand up comedy books, etc. The origins of the term are found in ancient Greece. And comedy. It's all about, and you guys know this, as performers and as producers, it's all about the way that you deliver, not necessarily your material or the content. That's what makes your jokes funny. Classics like Steve Martin. I mean, he's another, I mean, I love Steve Martin. One of his movies, The Jerk, is classic. 
That's a great movie. He plays this this fool of fools. Um, but he's again, he, it's kind of like a, a Steve Carell. He's just so oblivious he's to so how much like of a jerk he is. It's hilarious. Um, and I think it was set in the 70s or something like that. So you get a good set with the fashion and all of that. It, it takes it to a whole different level. How do you know what's funny then, really? Because it's like, okay, someone may say, well, I don't, I don't really appreciate, I don't get Steve Martin or I don't get this person or that person. Well, there are some techniques that can be applied to help you determine what is funny. So here's some considerations as we begin to get into the first exercise or example of writing. It is to take a basic story. Hey, I went for a walk in the park today with my dog. And we're going to pull up that comedic potential. The embellishing, exaggeration, or digging, digging deeper into it. And these are some of the elements. So objective. So what is it? Every story has an objective. It's what your character wants based on immediate needs and that that's part of pulling the, the, the funny aspect of it or their desires. For example, you're having dinner with your boss and colleagues at a fancy restaurant and all of a sudden you get the hiccups. Normal, right? Let's say your objective is to impress your colleagues. So then how do you gracefully get rid of the hiccups? And this is where we have conflicting objectives. So once you have that conflict to be met with that, you know, immediate desire, you start to pull the comedic aspect of it. And then you have the sense of urgency. When something is urgent, it calls for immediate attention or action now. What, do you, what, what crazy thing are you going to do now in the moment to make it funny? So here are some examples. We exaggerate. Not funny. A guy holds a girl's hands and he asks her out on a date. Pretty basic. What could be funny is when you apply the, um, the desire and the urgency. It's been weeks since I've seen you, my darling. He gets on his knees, holds her hands and says, the doctor says I'm going to go crazy if I don't get female companionship immediately then you start to see how that, how that comedic potential can be pulled from it. If you have equally opposing um, urgent objectives that conflict with each other, for example, your salesperson is about to close in on a deal over the phone. It's a deal he desperately needs to make the sale. And while he's on the call, he looks outside his window, notices his bike, his motorcycle, whatever is, is being stolen. It's a need. So here's where we put the conflicting objective. He doesn't want to lose the sale because that's going to lose money. He doesn't want to lose his bike either because that's going to lose money. So how does he accomplish both objectives? So we're going to pull a real life story. This is a, and we have to remember there's comedy all around us. I don't care how boring or drab the story is. Um, you're going to find, you're going to find a comedic aspect to it. Life is, life is comedy. And here are some ideas, you know, if you're struggling to find ideas, waiting area, area at an airport, doctor's office, family vacations are classic, known for crazy stuff happening, holidays, occasion, uh, occasion gatherings, dinner. Um, and I, again, he's another one, Chevy Chase, back in the day, if you guys saw um, National Lampoon's, the holiday. And so this is a classic example with the dinner table, the turkey, burns basically <laughs> and then it just may mayhem ensues from there it's hilarious um but here's my story the coyote and tomato garden okay and this is a real story so every so the examples that i'm going to use give to you a real life that i pulled from real life but i just took the comedic aspect from it the coyote and tomato garden so you say what does a coyote have to do with tomatoes you'll find out Tell the story as it is, and that's, we're going to go into that. A friend, um, a friend was talking to a group of us about how concerned she was that bugs were feasting at her grandmother's tomatoes in her garden, of which she worked so hard to plant and cultivate. 
And in the most serious manner, another friend replied, well, you know, you should try coyote urine. What's so funny about that? So let's now, based on the principles the, uh, that we were just looking at, objective, urgency, and conflicting ob uh, objective, let's try to break it down and see if we can get that potential from it, right? Of the coyote and tomato garden story, objective. So the objective here, saving the tomatoes, right? So would you agree that that would be the objective here? Yeah. Yes. We want to save those tomatoes. Now, how, how bad do we want to save them? I don't know, what, coyote urine? I, I, am I going to have to take a couple of days off from work, go on a camping trip to the woods and de trap a coyote? That's how bad you want to save those tomatoes. And what could be the conflict? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, how else are you going to get urine? I'm going to have to ask grandma that I need to, buy, to, to use uh, one of her catheter kit to save her, to her own tomatoes. <laughs> Extreme, conflicting, crazy. And so then the joke can be now, now, I don't know about you, but I'm from the city and um, it sounds like you just can't go out and buy coyote urine in the store. That's just crazy. Coyote urine? So what do you gotta go catheterize the animal to get the urine just to have some tomatoes? So you gotta go to your boss now, ask for a day off to take a long weekend, go camping to the woods, right to find the coyote you have to go to walmart buy a camping gear and then you ought to have to ask grandma if you can use one of her catheter kits oh. who's going to want to eat those tomatoes after there's urine from a coyote on them um, and it turns out you can buy them in stores i didn't know that at the time you could buy coyote urine in stores i've heard that before that's crazy no, i worked on a farm i didn't know that yeah my big wig boyfriend so I used to go to all these glamorous red carpet events because I was dating a big wig. All right. So the objective is I date a big wig to get into the glam events, right? The urgency. He is such a big wig that he actually wears a big wig. Conflict. Is he still... Is he such a big wig that he could take it off? Well. <laughs> I love it. So I used to go to all these glam red carpets, red carpet events because I was dating a big wig. Yeah, we used to drive to, to these red carpet events and he would wear his big wig. Actually, while driving to the 2009 Tonys, we got into a huge fight over why Hillary should ditch those pants suits. And he took his big wig off and threw it at me. <laughs> He's such a big shot that he does wear a big wig and he could take it off. So that's how, uh, those are just a couple of examples how to, to pull some humor in something that may seem um, otherwise ordinary. Think of a, like something, you know, that would otherwise seem, you know, ordinary, but we're going, and based on these principles here, we'll pull the potential from it. Pull from real life. Okay. You will, you'll, you can embellish later, but just pull something from real life. You know, anything that has some, some, some sense of truth to it, because that's what's going to make it funnier. So like some of the other ones, um, you know, Grocery store line. I can't tell you how many just standing in the market basket line. I, I mean, it's, I could write a whole monologue from that there. Uh, wow, that's a good one. The supermarkets. Yeah, think of think of a supermarket. Um, think of um, you know, so you know, maybe a conversation you overheard. Have to be comedic yet or do we create that story to be comedic later we will create it later. but you can certainly write down the like you can certainly start breaking it down uh using you know 
uh, these principles. Can you assign me a project? Like when we were at the studio and we were recording, your dog disappeared into green screen. It'd be classified as sci-fi. You could you could submit that to like a sci-fi comedy fest, and you know. <laughs> Right, that's so funny. It was like a project, and I don't know. We yeah. started, yeah, and then the dog disappears during the show. <laughs> that's, that's science. You just took your, you just took uh, this girl runs the show, and you just gave it a new genre. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where did the dog go? You got a little something straightforward. Uh, a few years ago, I went out to brunch with a friend in Davis Square, the Burr, and I rode my bicycle there. And when I arrived. I realized I left my U lock to my U lock at home. So I noticed that the area where people parked their bikes at Davis Station, there were several bikes there. So I just put mine in there so it would blend in, make it look like it wasn't noticeable, that it wasn't locked up. And I told my friend this after afterward. I didn't want to tell her right away because I didn't want her to worry. I think I should go deal with the bike. And um Two hours later, it was still there, untouched. No one took it. Your objective is you want to find your bike there when you get back now. So how can you exaggerate that um, to address the sense of urgency? Maybe coming up with different excuses could make it funny. Something funny where like you can't, you have to, like we have to sit at the window on the corner because this is like, you know, almost like because you have to watch your bike. I don't know, like this could go like so many places, but it's funny because it can turn into this whole thing where, you know, you're limited to like where you're eating, what you're doing. Aline's already introduced the uh, conflicting objective. You want to impress your girlfriend, you want to impress the girl, but you want to keep your bike. You have to modify things. But remember, you can't forget the girl. So this is how it could just, it, it could be hilarious. It could be so funny. I can't make myself look on, like, like I'm careless and leave the lock at home. So I'm giving excuses to save face. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's, con it's, a con it's a continuous conflict. And that's what makes it funny. So you could be like, okay, you know, but they're, but they're playing music. There's the, there's a, the guitarist, you know, out, outdoor performer. Let's listen oh. to him, you know, let's support our, co our community artists. You know what I mean? Or yeah. something like that. And it's she's funny. like, yeah. When you come, you say something else to impress her. Okay, so Rob, we've got yours. Aline? I do like the green screen. I think we could do a lot with that. I think it's funny because, you know, my dog go, comes with me everywhere I go. I think, you know, it's funny to have her like on the shows and then all of a sudden, you know, she does a little twirl and in her little tutu and she's like gone. We did have c conflicting objectives. You want to run a show and you want to make sure that your co-host is within the frame, green yeah. screen frame. Yeah. Okay. This is where we can exaggerate and embellish because it didn't really happen. I noticed she's gone in the green screen as I'm watching because I can see it and I say something funny like, well, you know, lady just took off to go and, you know, lady just saw another pup and she decided to take off for a bit, but she'll be back in a, in a, she'll be back in a spin or two. She twirls and comes back in another outfit or something, you know, right. this is a great idea, Tina, for a show, an upcoming show, you know, where we're in the studio and I could, and I could do it this way where we do something so funny, you know, and it's like, it turns into more comedy while we're doing the show. It's cool having a dog be, <laughs> right there in the center of, of the of the plot of what you're doing. She's the one minute she's there and the next minute she's not. Okay, so it sounds like we have we do we've got our stories, our real life, and we've 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 breaking it down to pull out the funny potential. This is how we could do it very creative and pulling what we have together. And then we you see the ideas and the collaborations that we're already gonna develop from it too, right? So this is a continuation. The uniqueness of your character, it has to be distinctive because now you're going to tell it. The stories is going to be told. We're going to bring it to life now. Not only is it going to be funny, but it's going to be told through a character, a funny character, who's going to deliver it. So remember in the beginning, we said it's all about delivery. So it's not whatever material you have, the way you deliver it is, is what's going to make it. Um, and this is how we have audience engagement and 
you know, et cetera, et cetera, is in the delivery. And the more distinctive your character is, the more you're going to um, connect with your audience. And then when you connect with them, you get that energy. And that's Kay Best, um, the wig that I can't find right now. That feeling and ins inspiration, remember the friends, the office, Steve Martin. This is where we get our inspiration. And, you know, I kind of like <clears throat> channel a lot of that energy when I do like Kay Best or whatever. Well, how would, you know, in that sort of centering myself and then redirect that energy inwards? Be yourself and have fun. So we're going to do some silly faces, some silly sounds and body language and just note how, what kind of emotion surface as we, as we do this. Funny faces, take one. Happy. Bored. Confused. Excited. Angry. Crazy. The emotions take two. Charming. Impatient. Determined. Disinterested. Crazy. Fear. All right. How was that? Fine. Wow. <laughs> The crazy is the easiest one if you're doing Kramer. If I were doing K Best, um, which you'll see, I would be speaking, you know, with her, and she's very Hollywood and 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 pompous, and she's on her, you know, diva in her mind, diva status all the yeah. time. And so let's go into like one more exercise of. Um, that's a great photo of you and Wally, by the way. Look yeah, at what thank you, you thank you. Of character development. Kay Bass, how, how was Kay born? Well, Kay was inspired, again, by Wally, um, which came from Mae West, like the, you know, the voluptuous, like, you know, back in the day Hollywood star, and she had this, this great first yeah. And so that was me on stage. Uh, where that wig is now, I don't know. I'm gonna probably have to get another wig. But that was her performing. It was a part of a skit that um, that I wrote, where she had her red carpet. She took it to an interview with the U.S. Army. So she was interviewing with the U.S. Army. So again, it's like opposing glam. What does she have to do with U.S. Army? Well, she thinks that she's so glamorous. She's just going to win them over. Just you know, here I am. And, why wouldn't you want me? And, you know, she's an hour late to the interview. And, you know, the general's like, you know, you're an hour late. And she's like, well, my assistant didn't tell me I was in another time zone. So you have this general who's like, you know, and you have Kay Best who's like on her time zone. So that's kind of how I pull that together. So that's where that photo is from. It's Kay Best, the one and only. You ask her how old she is, she'll be like, that's rude to ask. A lady never tells her age. Come on. Where do you live? Um, I have a home in New York, LA, in Milano. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Single, divorced twice, well, really just once because the first was annulled. Occupation, diva. Obviously. And she Hobbies. carries red carpet everywhere she goes. Exactly. Hobbies. Does shoe shopping count? 
goals to one day be SNL's most fabulous host, of course, when they call, when they come to their senses. Loves and hates. I love air kisses and emojis. I hate bad wig days and twist off bottles. Quirky qualities. I carry my own red carpet. I do not wait for the, a red carpet event. I carry my own. So wherever I go is a glam event. And That's a major right. devil vacuum, of course, to keep my carpet clean. I can't walk on a dirty carpet, right? Not KRS. Miscellaneous. Since I don't have to wear lipsticks in the COVID world, I don't have to worry about eating it anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so funny. This is so k totally. Yeah. So, the is born. Yeah, you guys are gonna do a list for yourself. You probably have your character already. By this list here, by my answers, if you didn't know k best, I think you get a sense of her now from this, from the answers. And so let's, do, let's develop, um, you know, our other, develop your characters. Your character you, is answering for you. Tina is, I'm totally opposite to this. So, <laughs> you know, you guys know me well enough, but in K-Best, this is her world. So I wanted you to really get a, a, a nice sense of her and to appreciate her. And so that's what I want you guys to do. And then in the next um, exercise in developing, think about what, what, what's his or her name, his, her, she, hers, them, who, however you want to identify the character, age, place of residence, they're married, occupation, excuse my spelling, hobby, goals, love and hates, quirky qualities, and mis anything else you, you disclaimer you want to say about them. I'd love for you to help me pick a character. Is she married? Is she a, does she, is she, does she live the single life? Was she divorced? Well, how does she spend her free time? And the way she spends her free time will pretty much determine who she is. This is a good assignment because this is like a fun assignment to help you create almost like a monologue, but instead of a monologue, it's like you're creating a comedy character or some like a, an opposite, you know, I like this. How would you like your story? In what way do you want to deliver? What's the best voice to deliver if it's the green screen story or any other story? Um, again, to resonate with your audience because they're not resonating with the story necessarily. They're res resonating with the character. You can even be like... Um, oh, who's the girl that runs the show? Right. It's a lady. It's um, a lady. So you could be her spokesperson. You could be the one that she's yeah. such a diva. She doesn't... You talk, You be her, her talking piece, basically. She's the girl that runs the show. I mean, it's, it's not me, it's lady. So when we spend the last few minutes of class and you talk about you the green screen, now you're talking it through her eyes. Then you could you could still fill in everything here and it would be just as funny. And then a person that doesn't know, like that if you're referring to a dog, may even think you're referring to an actual person depending on how you fill this out. This is funny. This could really go somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Rob, now let's go to you for your um, character. Use your imagination. You're going to start again embellishing. You're going to start creating something that's outside of yourself. Not the same personality as mine. Uh, where would he live? A made up city somewhere. Was he born in that city? No. Okay, so he relocated. Why did he relocate? For, uh, for work. What type of work does he do? He works in business. Oh, is he in the entertainment business, finance business, education business, or does he, is he like a Kramer? He just, <laughs> he, he has a job, but nobody really knows what it is. <laughs> he's in uh, the corporate world. And so he's doing well for himself, successful businessman. I bet you he's like, has to fight off the ladies, right? Yeah. You know, wherever he is, does he like? I don't know, does he like to go fishing? Does he like to go on vacations? Does he like to play golf? Golf. Okay. He likes bicycles a lot, like $4,000 bicycles. 
Oh, wow. So he's probably got one of those BMW bikes that you can fold up and he could put in his Range Rover or something. <laughs> he does. Maybe I can make an arrangement for him to meet Kay Best. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So now, so now as we develop it by answering some of these questions, these are just examples, you know, could be doesn't have to be all of this or some of this or other ones that helps us to develop the character. And I showed you K-Best just to give you an example. So now it seems like we have our characters, right? We kind of um, have a little idea of our original characters and who they are and the voice that when we tell our story, going back to when we worked on our stories, green screen, Aline, Rob, you've got the bike story, and we're going to see it through um, their eyes now. No longer Aline's eyes or Rob's eyes. It's going to be through the new character as they continue to develop. And this is where you can improv, of course, draw from whoever your inspirations are. What you know, we did a little uh, Seinfeld, whatever comes to mind. So are we ready to sort of put this all together? Uh, yeah. Are there any questions before we kind of put it all together? No, I think you covered it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's great. And then that red carpet fever was a skit that I performed. You can use only body language if you want. You could do a combination. You can sing it. You can recite it however you want to tell the story. Uh, in whatever manner you want to tell it in, it's a it's a safe place. We're just here to have fun and and just work on our creativity and just take it to the next level, right? So well, absolutely, especially when you know the advice that's coming from Kay Bess with her oh. red carpet fever. <laughs> it's all about the red carpet fever. Basically, remember how you told it straight, and then we we pulled out the comedic potential improv just kind of go with it yo honey i'm sorry but i don't know if i'm feeling this place today is okay if we go somewhere else oh but i was so looking forward to hearing the irish music today but we haven't had good weather in a while and we gotta enjoy the good weather why don't we go someplace that has a patio that way we can see the whole neighborhood and all the all the trees with their beautiful leaves and flowers. A successful businessman. And for some reason, he just decided to ride his bike instead of taking his Range Rover or whatever to meet his date. It's a nice day. He decided to drive from his condo, but he forgot the lock. But remember, it's a $4,000 bike, but he can't cancel the date. Now the stakes are higher because yeah. it's Four thousand dollar bike, or however expensive it is. It's, uh, Even though be... he can replace it, still you don't want to take the chance of losing it. But he want—he's really into this girl. That's good. The story is coming. It's coming to life. Maybe some of this is where maybe he, you said his quirk might be. He has. Does he have a funny laugh? So he's getting a little nervous because he realizes what's going on, but she doesn't. So maybe this quirky kind of laugh comes out. And he's nervous, that nervous laughter. Does he snort? Does he like giggle? It's, but, and then this is where you can have yet another conflicting objective. Well, he's um, so arrogant that he can't really miss his mistakes. And he's been okay. clueless and left his bike lock at home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's too proud to, to admit that to his girlfriend. It's, he's just, that's how he rolls. Lady's voice. Okay, I, buddy. Hi, I'm Lady, and I'm really the girl who runs the show, at least in my dog mom's life every day. <laughs> um, my age, well, you know, in dog years, I don't age. I always look fabulous, especially in my zazzling tutus that my mom dresses me up in all day long. I love being the center of attention. I love watching my show, and I love dressing up all day, single and ready to mingle, I love yappy hours. Mom loves happy hours. But I prefer yappy hours because I get to meet all the other pups and play. Uh, occupation? 
hello, I'm the girl who runs the show. Hobbies, I uh, do magical disappearing acts in the green screen. I actually have a lot of hobbies. I lounge all day, I sleep all night. I love to play and eat and just dress up. I love dressing up in my zazzling tutus and just roaming the city all day. Oh, and I must grab my puppuccinos at Starbucks. Best qualities, obviously, is dressing up as a diva in my zazzling tutus. Yeah. Another star is born. <laughs> yeah, if she could talk, she would say a lot of those things. You just thought of that all on the spot? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I liked it a lot. Thank you. That's great, Aline. That could even be another um, a show to, to, in her voice, talk about what happened with the disappearing act. It's brilliant. It really is. I think that's, that's great. And, you know, that's how we, like, discover, discover that, that inner voice, inner character in us. But that was, oh, it's fan that was fantastic, Aline. Thank you. Thanks. I enjoyed that. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, me too. That was fun. Hey. Right? Yeah, you guys both helped me, like, you know, inspired me to come up with something. I mean, no one says you just need one character. Right. She kind of sees, that's through, and, and that's how Walter, because I said he, he helped me develop the character, but he also created that character for me. He just said, you know, you're, I see you in this. I'm like, really? And then we developed it and it came out. So it's interesting that Aline sees you in that, in that light. That That's funny. This is kind of the antithesis to me because I'm not, I'm not outgoing. And I don't, I don't try to show off. I mean, I know I have talents in certain areas, certain hobbies I like, but I don't show off. But that's well, almost funny where you can, like Tina, Tina's character is the exact opposite. With Kay Best, you, you know Tina, right? So it's so cool that she creates this huge, big red carpet Hollywood, you know, over the top character. So maybe like, like finding this opposite person or, you know, like Tina said, you could do multiple characters. You could try different ones and see which one you like doing. I say name, who comes out or what name, what comes out? Basil. Basil. Yeah. Um, how, how old is Basil? 30. Where, where was he born? LA. LA. Basil in LA, young man in LA, probably single. Yes, he's, he's living the bachelor life. And what does he do for a living? Uh, he is the CEO of a uh, furniture factory. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so what does he like to do on his off time? Uh, collects uh, $4,000 titanium bicycles. Oh my God. Uh, smoke cigars and go golfing. Oh, sophisticated young man, huh? Um, only on the surface. He's not really sophisticated. Oh, he's got a little bad boy in him, Aline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. The ladies probably like that. Expand uh, the, fran uh, the different franchises that he oversees it, it, within the furniture company that he is the CEO of. Uh, he wants to make a name for himself. He's got so many different endeavors and hobbies and... Um, I would say he, he knows how to throw his weight around to get what he wants. And he's really good at manipulating people. Mm -hmm. Women, for sure, are very easily manipulated by him. James Dean, good looking. Oh, he's uh -huh. not good looking. So uh, that, you know, he, he gets a lot of women, simple. He, I know he's got a little quirkiness about him, which we all do. But something that he doesn't like people to know, or is it a common knowledge? He doesn't know how to change the flat on his bicycle. He doesn't know how to change the flat on his own $4,000 bike. Okay. That's like that's the most basic thing you can do for bicycle maintenance. I mean, changing grips, but maybe easier, but bicycle. Maybe that's where the comedy starts, is you're on the date, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, and you, you're like, I'll be right back. And it's like, you go out and you're like changing your bicycle tire or something and she sees you and she's like, what are you doing? What do you mean you don't know how to do this? I grew up with like three brothers. <laughs> and she does it for you or something. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I met my perfect match. <laughs>
That's a story. That's funny. You know, that's not that's not what he wants to happen. He, okay. he's, very, he's a very proud man. He he doesn't like showing that he, that he has certain weaknesses or quirks. Oh. It's, it's, right. it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work within his way of living. That's not it. That's he's always always projecting an image of strength of intelligence, of confidence, of competence, and uh, smooth talking. Man of ego. Man of ego. Man of ego. But he can, he can be a little... Um, narcissistic? Narcissistic, <laughs> without doubt. Definitely narcissistic. He's very good looking. He's very rich. They, they sort of just put up with it just because of his his high status and who he is in society. Nobody's really perfect. And um, even narcissists are perfect, are like geniuses at this, that they always <clears throat> try to project something other than what they really are inside. So it could be, I mean, it's a continuous conflict that he's always trying to impress people. The way he wants to feel vulnerable, because he knows he needs the help. And in a sense, he doesn't want to ask for the help. But she gets him. Maybe she gets it or whatever, you know. And um, he puts his guard down. He, he puts he allows right, puts his guard down, and then kind of shows himself off, a, his real self off a little bit. You start describing a person before you see the picture. Like, hey, best, I show you the picture. But if I didn't have the picture, you can kind of come up with in your own Visualize. imagination. Yeah. You have your visual. That's how it starts. This was great, Robert. Right. Yeah, because you just described this whole person that I just visualized. That's why I, I guessed narcissist and egotistic because you described it very well. You've got your star, Rob. That right there. Congratulations. Yay. Hey, you did great. How'd you feel? It was really fun. It was fun, right? I enjoyed it a lot. I appreciate hearing your ideas and and the encouragement you guys have given me. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining. It was a pleasure um, working with you and I look forward to continued collaborations. Thank you for putting this together. This was thank really you, cool. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. Fun. Yeah, it was really fun. I've got some great ideas from this. I think you have working too. Working on characters, you know, I'm always, I'm in touch with you guys anyway, so. Right. Like, we, there's definitely some collaborations um, yeah. that's in the making. Rob, start with, um, with, your new, with your new voice, Basil. Make sure that you continue to develop him. Sounds like a great character for you to play. He sounds very interesting. Very interesting. And this, there could be so much to come from that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to, to developing it. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks.